obviously I spoke about the whole Addies and Baddies thing, right? Happening the other day. I didn't know, this is crazy, right? I didn't know that that happened on Brendan's birthday. The whole, no, sorry, the whole Baddies leak. That happened on Brendan's birthday. So th that's what I'm saying. BGO is like another level of psycho. Another level of a psycho. This guy, right, is going through hell right now. Even though he tries to make it seem like he's not, he must be going through hell. Because at the heart of it, even though he's somewhat of a celebrity, he's still a regular person. He's not a celebrity in the big sense of the word where he can maybe detach himself from his online personality. It's still kind of him. So he's going through hell right now because he's been accused of flipping domestic violence, which is a pretty heavy charge to have on your jacket. And we've seen video evidence, like documented, gruesome, horrible, kind of funny, but also kind of horrifying if you did go through it before, you know, hearing a woman scream and plead and stuff and hearing him be so cold and callous and he's recording clips of her. They're recording clips of, she's recording clips of him. The whole, he's hurting me, he's hurting me, deadlifting a car. It's just gross and kind of yucky, right? Cool. That's happening. And he's suffering, right? On the off the back of this. And he's going through hell. He's kind of been fired already from the fire and the kid. And you're thinking, bloody hell, man, can it get any worse for this guy? So you're thinking he's fighting for his life. He's drowning. The guy's drowning, fighting for his life. You think, okay, cool. He's gonna chill. He's gonna fight this charge, whatever it may be, and kind of go from there. Nah. Not even in the slightest. He's not chilling. He's not fighting his charge. He decided to leak. All that stuff regarding the flipping baddies, all those D, all those SMSs, not DMs, text messages, which is really personal. That really shows that they were friends. I messaged, you know, communications. He's just leaking them all, leaking the entire thing into the flipping, into the, <laughs> into directly enemy hands, which is the fire and the kids subreddit and stuff, right? Which is flipping crazy. And obviously then everyone goes nuts. And I'm sure. I'm sure some of those psychos on that Reddit, some of them decided to probably DM the Mexican, right? And she probably got flooded in and dated with flipping messages from randoms, telling them, writing baddie in all her pictures, sending her DMs with all the proof and stuff. And then Brennan's wake up in the morning thinking, what the fuck is going on? And suddenly, you know, all your secrets are out there and people can see your wife knows everything happens. So that happens. And then I guess everyone was waiting for Brendan's reaction. Like, what's he going to do? Like, he's been basically exposed. Um, his wife probably knows everything he kind of gets up to. And in a really surprising turn, something that I didn't even expect would happen. It just came out of the blue. Maybe it was just all a bad timing. Maybe it just happened with the blue. This is the, this is the first thing the guy does once he's been outed as being a guy who allegedly is trying to hook up with anything that moves it at any flipping comedy store tour he kind of goes on the first thing he does post allegations from bgl is the following <laughs> what's up guys today is one on the old bucket list not too many people know this but for the last five years your boy has been saving every single dime from all my touring on the road for one reason one reason only it's a big goal for anybody, whatever you're doing, whether you're in entertainment, podcasting, YouTuber, regular gig, whatever it is, your goal always is to buy your parents a house. Our kids are going crazy right now. Our kids are going absolutely crazy. The goal is always to buy your parents a house. Well, today, all that hard work, all those tour dates, all that stuff, it's come to fruition. I'm buying my mother-in-law a house. She's the best grandma in the world. She has no idea this is happening. She's gonna pull up the house, I'm gonna give her the keys. So I want to thank the fans out there for making this possible, buying every single ticket to all those crazy cities I was in, to the haters too. You motivate me more than you know, but I love you guys, and I'm waiting for Mama to pull up right now because I'm about to give her keys to her new house. So it's pretty dope. <laughs> the first thing, the first thing you do, the first thing you do post those allegations is this. Now, let's be... Let's be uh let's be charitable here. Let's be charitable. No one uh, no one no one gets a crib <clears throat> like this on a whim. Even if it is a loan, even if it is a leak, whatever, even if it's not you know bought out in cash, whatever it may be, you don't do this stuff overnight. So most likely this was always in the works. This was something that was always kind of being worked on behind the scenes. And then maybe the timing aligned and it kind of was beneficial to kind of put this out there to kind of look like you're the good guy. But the timing could not be any worse, could it really? Because this looks, this looks like extortion. <laughs> this is what it looks like. 
<laughs> it looks like extortion and it looks like the price of adultery. Like if you want to cheat, <laughs> if you want to do your stuff out there and whatever it may be on the road, this is the price you have to pay. And I remember saying beforehand, I was thinking with all the leaks that came out, you know what was funny? I said before, it's like people are acting as if those leaks are going to do something. They won't because clearly there's been evidence of this before right there's been evidence before we saw evidence of this beforehand i don't want to mention it but you know if you know you know and you know the mexican didn't go anywhere so clearly this person isn't necessarily operating the way people on the internet think a regular person would operate they maybe have different priorities whatever whatever maybe it's religious stuff who knows who gives a crap but if she didn't leave then why would she leave now so i don't understand this whole um hype and for all around the idea of like oh my god it's a bomb show it's going to end everything no it won't if anything, what it would have done, like I said in the previous stream, is that every time this has happened, the Mexican sometimes gets the all expenses paid trip to Las Vegas, <laughs> right? Or maybe a, a new Birkin, maybe a new Gucci pair of flip flops or something. I don't know, but it looks like the stakes have been risen. I think ever maybe maybe you know maybe mum's you know maybe the Mexican's tired of going to Las Vegas and doesn't care anymore. Now someone else is going to get something out of this, so they're gonna. It kind of reminds me of that Denzel Washington clip with um, Jamie Fox. I'm gonna leave here with Sutton. You know, like the like Mexicans, like you know what? I'm leaving you with Sutton. If you're gonna go out there and do what you're gonna do, if you want to get addies and baddies, I'm leaving with Sutton. So I get the bags, I get the shoes every time you do something. Now we're up in the ante, and now mummy's getting a house. So if it does eventually go south, I've got somewhere to go. You know, <laughs> that's what because maybe the house that they got before. Isn't, who knows what's going on there? But the timing is just like the timing is crazy. The timing is crazy, in my opinion. The timing is nuts, and. I was I was thinking before I think people were mentioning as well about the thing I mentioned in the conversation. Doesn't Brendan look? I wouldn't say skinny, but doesn't he look like stressed? <laughs> I know he doesn't use moisturizer and stuff, but he looks really pale. And this definitely looks like something that's been up at night, <laughs> stressing about those DMs. And I think to myself like BGL. BGL is like the worst friend ever. He's going through a minor. I will say, man, he's going for a work dispute with somebody that used to be a friend. And this is what he's doing. He's leaking DMs, bruh. DMs. DMs. That you know could legitimately end this guy's marriage. That could legitimately harm the future of his children and stuff. That's crazy. I know what happened, but just think about the, the, the psyche you need to go through someone's head where they have a dispute over money. And again, he hasn't given... That's, that, think, that's what I said before. He hasn't given Brendan a chance even to like say no they haven't even a chance to kind of argue about how much he's owed he's just gone straight up when from like zero to a hundred like he just went straight okay you know like just sh straight chernobyl or <laughs> flipping brendan and now he's having to pick up the pieces it's absolutely crazy man and and if i'm not mistaken isn't la one of those crazy states and again maybe I, I don't know anything about you know i'm not too familiar with the laws there but isn't la one of those crazy states in america where if you get married or you're legally binded whatever it may be that if you do divorce your partner gets crazy amount like the woman also gets gets always gets given like mad amounts in the settlement is that am i right in thinking that there's always that crazy things laws about that right I take half god damn it man the price this guy had to pay for like yes yeah, oh yeah people are saying cali is 50 percent. yeah so oof, price this guy had to pay for flipping the baddies texas is crazy but again he can't really be blamed because this was done in secret and then bgo was the one that flipping up you know basically blew it out there he did everything in his power to kind of be shady and be sneaky about it plausible deniability using bgo as a front guy all this stuff and then bgo kind of just baited him up just blew up his entire spot and now he had to buy a fucking house for his mother-in-law When's the last time you've heard Brendan even speak about his mother-in-law? Suppose she's the best mother-in-law in the world. According to his stand-up comedy, she can barely speak English. Right? He said, and now she's all of a sudden, the you don't even hear him talk well about his own wife, let alone his mother-in-law. So now suddenly she's turned into this like, you know, um, abuela from flipping heaven. <laughs> I don't know. It's fucking hilarious. Let's see the next clip as well. That kind of shows more of it as well. I want to see the next clip. I think because the, the mother gets a hold of the keys as well, I think. Yeah, let's see the next clip as well. But let's play the video. I didn't even think about this. What if she doesn't like the house? <laughs> Mama. Hi, guys. What's going on? Hey. Hi, Mabel. You made it. <laughs> Mama. Yeah. This is your house. Yeah. That's why you guys are. 
Yep, for being the best grandma. Set yours, mama. Go ahead. Me down, me down. Don't hide me, uncle. <laughs> <laughs> This guy's a stand-up comedian, you know. He's not a he's not like a person from like Vanderpump Rules. He's not from Jersey Shore. He's not like a I don't know. This is meant to be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> what the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? There's so much to analyze here. So much to analyze. Number one, an an analyze. I need to analyze here. Why does Brendan, again, maybe I'm over overanalyzing this. Why does he look so awkward in front of the camera? Got to put this down a bit here so you can see. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on, let, 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 me put, let me put the screen up so you can see here. Why does this man look so weird in front of a camera? Like, why is he just, he doesn't, why does he look so, like, uncomfortable when he gets in front of a camera like this? Especially, like, like, w w w what's this all about? Why does he look so weird? Like, no, no word in front of a camera. Maybe because it's a wife, maybe because of what's happened with the allegations. But he just looks uncomfortable a little bit. He just looks a bit weird around him. And another thing also, kids running around, the family around, there doesn't seem to be a lot of, like, again, reading too much into this and kind of projecting, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of, like, affection going on with this. It all just seems a bit sterile and a little bit, cold when really you'd think if that's like your wife and that's like your wife's brother or or, or like your you know like there's family members there right there's uncles there's brother-in-laws there's uncles-in-laws whatever it may be it just seems a little bit like that they've all just met each other the same day you know like i don't know it just seems a bit weird overall and a kind of you know attempt at a joke didn't really garner much and then the meeting with the mum when she oh sorry when she rolls up i find interesting and and definitely by the way you know when it comes to the kids, you know, we don't want to talk about that too much, but with the meeting with the mum, do they, do they have conversations? Do they talk, you reckon? Like, what do you think it's like when, like, for instance, like, here's a scenario. When the wife goes into the kitchen to grab something and he's left in the living room alone with the mother, what do you think they talk about? <laughs> do you think they have conversations or do you think he goes straight to his phone? <laughs> I think he pulls out his phone straight away. I don't think they've had many conversations. Like, because this hug is bizarre to give your mother-in-law. And again, overanalyzing stuff, I know. But again, we're all losers here. We don't have any lives. But this analyzation is strange. No, sorry, this hug feels very, very... There's not a lot of love there, you know? There's not a lot of affection going on there. It just feels a little bit like, I don't know, like a bit dry, a bit cold, cool. But the thing that got me the most here was this was the key exchange because he's standing side on when he's handing her the key like look at that body language it kind of reminds me a little bit of like um michael b jordan when he's having an interview with that girl in the in the press conference no in the red carpet of uh of creed and he's just standing there and obviously he knows that that's the girl that used to kind of bully him in school and she brings it up and he's like just give it he's just kind of standing there looking at her from the side and talking to her like this He's not even facing her front on. Like, no respect, no warmth, really. Just kind of, whatever. And this kind of feels, you know, it's, it's, he's like side on. There's no real big, like, I don't know. It, there's no kind of emotional speech there going on. You know, like, you're my favorite. Like, I don't know, a, a little joke. You know, you're my favorite. Don't tell my mom, shh, or something like that. Um, you've helped us so much more than words could say. And, you know, that I can't find words to describe how much you mean to us. But this is kind of the token from us as a family to show you our appreciation. Just some little kind of like sappy, soppy, you know, cringy kind of speech to show the love and affection there. Nothing. Just a kind of a side, a side of key handle, a side key thing. Like, what's that about? <laughs> they talk about Kanye. <laughs> I don't know. Like, what is going on here? Like, again, I I don't like to cover this stuff on here because I feel like I try to focus it more on Brendan because I feel like he's enough of a content a content generator, right? That you don't need to kind of look at the family stuff because I don't like to mention the Mexican older mom or anything for the kids stuff. But this kind of, we're forced to because the video features them in there. But I, it's a, this is the first time I've ever seen them, like ever. And this, 
doesn't look like a family. This doesn't look like a family to me. It looks like, you know, it kind of looks like a little bit. Like he is the baby daddy and he just comes, you know, he's kind of cordial, but there's no love there because essentially, you know, he broke your daughter's heart and stuff, right? Because he's not around. That's what it feels like. It's that if, if, if that was a relationship, it would make sense. If they were like not together, and but he's still kind of, you know, giving and willing to kind of help out when he needs to help out. But I'm sorry to tell. This is extortion. No love. No happiness. No excitement. Just transactional. Exactly. That's what I thought. That's what, thank you. I'm sorry to tell for the um, $10 super chat, my friend. I appreciate you. That's what I thought also. It feels very extortionate. But... I want to be, again, my unfortunate, my unfortunate Christian upbringing wants me to see the good in this and see the, the, and, and kind of be charitable and not see it only for the bad intent and see and think, hey, maybe this actually is a good thing and they were actually, because, because I don't think you could just buy a house like that. So this definitely was planned for a while. Maybe it's just a timing sort of aligned with the whole baddies leak. And it kind of was advantageous to kind of put some good press out there, which again is bizarre because essentially who are you doing this for? Are you doing this for people like myself or are you doing this for the fans? Like it's strange. I mean, it just, there's so many questions I have to ask about this whole thing, but the interaction I thought was so bizarre. The mum kind of doing the fake crying thing, knowing what's going on, him standing side on, the Mexican behind the camera being completely motionless or emotionless for the most part in terms of feeling like all the family members here on the outside looking like fucking crisis actors. I'm sure they're part of the family, but it just feels so cold. And imagine these are meant to be like, because I'm sure there are different levels of Mexican that exist, right? I'm sure there's like, you know, same way there's like different levels of black people. There's like the loud ones and there's like, you know, re there's like regular quote unquote ones that try to assimilate. So maybe this is like the white version of a Mexican. Maybe that's why. But I'm just expecting something. I'm just, I don't know. I'm expecting some loudness. Some, I don't know, some jubilation, something. Like what's going on here? Like, it's nothing. <laughs> I'm expecting someone to pull up with some dicky shorts, but I'm just like, there's no, it's all very like, thank you, mijo. Thank you. Thank you, Miho. Oh, and then final note. Final note. She does not look like what he describes in the flipping um, specials, does she? And she clearly speaks English. <laughs> Very well, actually. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> the way he painted her out in that special was horrible. Like, she legitimately arrived to me like from Mexico to the States, you know, by foot. <laughs> That's how we spoke about her. Like, And she's clearly not. You can tell just by looking at her, Jeremy, <laughs> how she dresses already kind of gives it away. Oh my God, man. Absolutely incredible. I thought that was the best prediction of it. And Brendan's face just like, I don't know. He calls his brother, Ox J, well, J, you know, shark teeth, doll smile, whatever. But he couldn't get less emotion, in it? And think about it also, right? Hey, big up story to tell. The, the mo mother is not excited. When you get a new house, you are loosing your noodles. This is probably the third house he bought her this year. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Big up the story to tell. Imagine if this is a price you have to pay for to flip in, get, I don't know, um, I don't know. I don't know, man. But big up the story to tell. Thank you for the $5 super chat, my friend. I also think, think, think about this also. We saw more emotion from Brendan when he was, cr when he was crying about Crystalia being found out to be a diddler. This is the bizarre thing about, I've always said before, like, again, touch wood doesn't happen anytime soon, but the the day flipping, you know, Rogan, unfortunately, is no longer around, you're going to see these guys sob in ways you've never seen them sob before. And I get, it won't, it'll pale in comparison to anybody they're actually close to, like a family member. You'll see it. Because the way these guys reacted to Chris Adil was like, he died that day, he didn't. You know what I mean? He got accused of something that he probably was guilty of, allegedly. And they were sobbing on camera as if like, I don't know. And then now look, a moment where you actually should be crying, a legitimate proud moment in anybody's life. If you can get somebody a house, it doesn't matter who they are. If you just buy someone, it's just, it's a, it should feel you with emotion that you're in that kind of position. Nothing. It's just dead. This to me feels like, a, this, this, this to me feels like extortion. And it also is ridiculous, in my opinion, that a stand-up comedian is doing this. This guy's meant to be a professional stand-up comedian. And he's doing these reality TV stunts to prove that he's a good guy and to get back in the good graces of, it just feels gross. Like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing here? 
This is why you should be spending more time writing jokes and less time sending DMs about baddies and shit. And just, I don't know, like, what is this? Like, this fear to this circus, this drama, it's just, it must, at some point, it must get exhausting. It should be exhausting. Like, come on. It's worse for him, too, because he's got, like, a million haters out there who clearly want to see the guy fail anyway. So it's not like you can do anything in secret because someone's always going to find out. Just leave it alone. Just stay at home. Look after the kiddos. Chill. It's not that deep out there, bro. Like, it really isn't that deep to be doing these, incl- you know, these clandestine flipping ops to flipping get baddies to text you back on DMs. And then now, look, you're having to buy a house. <laughs> well, any those, well, any those baddies worth it? You have to buy a house, honestly. I'd rather break up with somebody. I'm not. I'm not buying you a house, honestly. So I'm. I'm sorry. I refuse. Put as many of my DMs up on the screen. I'm not buying a house to kind of. You know what I mean? Big up a story to tell. Big thank you to the super, super chat. The price friend. you pay for baddies and addies. Exactly. Exactly. I'm not. Pay, I'm not paying that price. No baddie is worth that price. I don't care. Remember we said earlier on. Oh, I was saying about Natasha Laguerre. Is she worth a fight? I don't think so. Yeah, exactly. Sorry to tell. It's Big like up. a funeral. <laughs> exactly. Big up. Sorry to tell. Thank you, brother, for the super chat. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for the support. Yeah, definitely like a funeral. Like, yeah, exactly. Lesson: Leave the addies alone. It's never that deep. It really isn't that deep. He just did too much. Just too thirsty. Do you really need BG? That's the thing as well. I was saying earlier. Do you really need someone to help you out to be a scumbag? Really? To do your like scum shit? Just do it on your own. Why are you getting him involved? You don't even know the guy. You know him two years and you're getting him involved in really deep shit that you know if it goes left, it could end you. Because you'd imagine if, she, you know, if if it, if, it, if it ever did go to divorce and she tried to get 50% or more, that could be the end of the guy's career. Or maybe he had to shift careers. Who knows? But Jesus Christ, man, just relax. Relax, brother. Relax. And again, stand-up comedian, you know? Stand-up fucking comedian. Look what's happening. But hey, um, I guess big up him. 